Okay, so uh, it's very exciting to be here today. Uh, I got to see many, you know, you were just faces on Zoom until a couple of hours ago. So now I get to see that you are actual people. Uh, so this is very nice. I am also an actual person and uh, I'm an actual person called Marcelo Crema from the University of Aveiro in Portugal. And uh, I'm very glad, very glad to be here to introduce with this presentation entitled Intercultural Competence in EMI Settings, a Lecture Focused Initiative. This is my postdoctoral research project that I'm working under the supervision of Dr. Susana Pinto. And uh, well, let me get us some actual space here. A second, yeah, there we go. In the here, yes. Okay, so this is the basic organization of my my presentation. Nothing exotic going on here. I'll just talk about the research context, what we intend to do, how we intend to do it, and the results we might get. I just put this here because I wanted to be polite, but I don't think we have to go deep into a definition of EMI. This is a great advantage of, of this type of conference, uh, but also I wanted you to be aware that we are using the, the most, uh, I think the most common use Dearden Makara's definition. Uh, we are also aware of the, the discussions around the definition of EMI, other possibilities such as English medium, education, but for the sake of this presentation, to make things easier, I'll just talk about EMI. Whoops. Uh, previous, yeah, there you go. Um, as you're also aware, uh, EMI is, is has increased in popularity drastically in the last couple of decades, uh, and it's linked to the internationalization process that has been going on globally, and uh, with the aim of attracting students, lecturers, researchers, and consequentially improving status and revenues of institutions. That sounds great, that sounds great. But, there is all, always a but, uh, students are faced with this challenge. Uh, they are in this situation where they are, it's higher education, it's university. They're, they're learning new complex academic content while processing a second language. So they have these two highly demanding activities occurring at the same time. And uh, if that wasn't enough, lecturers also have the challenges because they must teach in a second language in most cases as most lecturers are not native speakers of English. Even if they are, they also face the challenge of accommodating all the needs of the students who aren't. And uh, the, these challenges are not made up by me. The literature uh, mentions them all using words such as arduous and demanding, and challenges, so not my creation. Uh, the challenges, they vary a lot. They might be about language, which is kind of uh, what you would expect if you change the language of instruction. At first, everyone is really concerned about language. Lecturers are going, is my English enough? Students are going, is our English enough? No one's really sure, but it goes beyond that uh, to pedagogy, understanding the challenges, Interaction seems to suffer a lot. Students complain a lot uh, about the difficulties of spontaneous speech production and the lack of interaction in, in, in EMI classes. And also the increased workload I put here just for the students, but lecturers have also talked about that, that it, it's much more demanding to prepare and deliver their classes, uh, EMI classes. And uh, I've been talking about uh, EMI. So, how about intercultural competence? Uh, about those challenges, about the things that have become relevant that we have realized about EMI, intercultural competence is one of them. Uh, it is normally listed as one of the desired outcomes of internationalization initiatives to develop interculturally competent students. Uh, but we, as the academy, we face the challenge of developing this field. Uh, Quickly going over a, a, a definition of, of intercultural competence and includes attitudes, knowledge, and skills. Uh, attitudes including openness, respect towards other cultures and other languages, knowledge, uh, knowledge about those other cultures and other languages, and the skills such as active listening, empathy, and observation. 
for for a long time, it was believed that intercultural competence was it was just developed, you know, when you studied a foreign language, you kind of saw, you know, those the, the native speaker models, and that'll be you, you get some intercultural development over there, or just go abroad. Yeah, you, you'll develop it, you'll be fine. <laughs> Obviously, after a while, we realized, well, well that not quite like that. Uh, so no, we are very aware that uh, the first citation says formal education is needed for the development of intercultural competence, or I see I might be using that acronym, uh, even in the second citation uh, on a document by the Council of Europe, it refers to the role of intercultural competence and formal education. So we know it doesn't, it's not just a byproduct. Now, let's talk about my research context. Uh, first, I, I work with two countries. Let's start with Portugal, which is where I'm, I'm based. And uh, intercultural competence has been investigated in Portugal and uh, with interesting results. Uh, there are not many studies, but the ones, the, the one that we have, it's very interesting. So lecturers were uh, surveyed on the importance of intercultural development in higher education students, and all of them, and all of them considered it crucial for two main reasons. And those are their words. The first uh, would be a humanistic reason. And that will be the need to change prejudice attitudes and prepare students to live in a diverse world. The second, economic reasons. Again, their expression, the need to empower students professionally. So that is, uh, well, at least I really like those results to show the awareness that the lecturers have uh, about the importance of intercultural development. But, 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 on the same study, the lecturers also say that they do not feel prepared to integrate IC development in their teaching practice. So they're in this very uncomfortable situation where they are aware of it, they are aware of its importance, all of them said it was crucial, but they don't know how to implement it, they don't know how to develop it in their teaching practice. Uh, and to be fair, they have not been trained to do so, right? On our other research context, which is Brazil, uh, internationalization is at a different stage than in Portugal. Portugal has been this hub, uh, this academic hub of the Portuguese language uh, for, for centuries, actually. And on the last few decades, it received lots of international students and staff and re uh, lecturers and researchers, but mostly from Portuguese speaking countries. So normally Brazil and African, uh, African countries that speak Portuguese. So uh, Portugal has experience with internationalization, but EMI, it's kind of new. Brazil is different. In Brazil, internationalization is much more recent. There were two big pro uh, projects. It was kind of one. There was Sciences Without Borders that, main, uh, that focused on undergraduate mobility. And as a consequence, Languages Without Borders was created to provide language support to all those students going abroad. But, but again, uh, uh, due to government cost cutting and uh, austerity, those pro programs uh, do not exist anymore. Nowadays, there's only CAP Sprint, which is much smaller and focuses on a postgraduate level. But as these programs, the uh, initiatives are recent in Brazil, we have a chance of developing them, them now that we are aware of the, the need to develop critical and intercultural approaches. And very few studies uh, explore EMI intercultural competence in Brazil, and I hope that makes this uh, the current project more needed. Now let's, let's connect those two. I've been talking about intercultural competence and EMI. Let's connect those two. So EMI, <laughs> something happened. I hope it's not bad. Uh, EMI programs aim to improve the inter, uh, intercultural competence of local students. Uh, that is something that is stated in, in, in documents frequently on universities on the reasons why they develop EMI programs. And what I find recent, uh, very interesting is in the second citation, more experienced EMI lecturers reinforce the relevance of intercultural challenges besides linguistic ones. Uh, kind of con connected to what I said before, at first, everyone's concerned about language. Oh my God, is it good enough? Proficiency, we should we test, not test. After a little while, 
with experience TMI lecturers, they seem to realize, okay, even when we deal with languages or we try to accommodate those challenges, there are things around that we should pay attention and intercultural competence is one of them. So a bit to sum up, EMI adoption has intercultural development as an outcome, desired outcome. Lecturers acknowledge the importance of intercultural competence development, but a specific pedagogy is needed for IC development. And Portuguese lecturers feel unprepared to integrate it, while Brazilian lecturers have just now started thinking about that. That leads us to our research problem, that is the need to support academics in the development of an intercultural pedagogy for EMI settings. And there are ways to support lecturers in developing students I see. I'd like to focus on the on the last citation that is provide intercultural skills training to develop teaching competence and model I see development. The reason why I want to focus on that one is because well that has to do to what I'm doing here. And uh before I get into that, let's explore a bit more the context. So we're working with two universities, the University of Aveiro in Portugal and the Federal University of Espírito Santo in, in Brazil. That might seem like a random pair. You might be wondering why those two. Well, first, those two universities are interested in investigating EMI adoption and the role of intercultural competence. Uh, again, in different points of their internationalization processes. So the University of Aveiro has been receiving international students for a long while, mostly Portuguese speaking ones, while the Brazilian, uh, the, uh, the Spirit Santo University is, it, it's recent, they're starting their EMI process, uh, their internationalization process in general. And also by having two different universities in two different countries, and two different continents, we gain an international perspective on this project that is international by nature. Um, here are two citations from uh, official documents from those two universities. So in last year, the University of Aveiro mentioned the aim of increasing the offer in English by 15%. Uh, and that was not the first time that a number like that or, or that idea has been mentioned. That was just the most recent one. And in Brazil and Federal University of Espírito Santo, in a re resolution from 2018, it says, Promotion of education and culture in foreign languages throughout the university community. If we use our experience in Europe to read that and to read in between the lines, normally when it says promotion in foreign languages and universities, we know it ends up being English, right? And uh, so th th that seems to be a, a, a nice way to put it, but what we see in practice is English. That takes us to our research objectives. So the first one is to develop a, di a diagnostic of EMI lecturers' views on intercultural competence development and identify their training needs to cope with EMI and foster students' intercultural competence. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll take a uh, we'll look at the we'll talk to the lecturers and develop this diagnostic. And based on that, we'll develop and conduct a teacher training initiative to equip EMI lecturers with tools for fostering intercultural competence in EMI teaching. So not we're doing exactly the opposite. You know those uh, training initiatives that no teachers want to go because they came out of nowhere and just said, look, this is what you need. And then they realize, well, we do not actually need that. And then no one goes. Well, we're trying to avoid that. So we're going to the lectures first and seeing what do you think you need? What do you think it's important? What are the challenges? What are the benefits? Uh, and what kind of support do you think you need so you can uh, add intercultural competence development in your EMI teaching practice? Because you got to remember, those lecturers have said in previous study that they find it crucial but don't know how to do it. So the work plan is to develop a questionnaire for EMI lecturers that has been developed, that uh, it's going through you know, data protection regulations that has been approved a couple of days ago, ethics committee, it went yesterday. So I'm, I'm checking my email, mail, email box like a maniac to see if they just give me the okay so I can send it to the lecturers. 
and uh, then con conduct a literature review naturally, apply the questionnaire online because two different continents, analyze the qualitative data thematically, and then develop and conduct the teacher training initiative online, different continents, and include lectures from both universities. The results dissemination, the first two are pretty uh, obvious, manuscript submissions, conference presentations, this being the very first one, but also a full day seminar with participants, so the lecturers and university stakeholders. Uh, I really want to emphasize that because I like to to reach lecturers that for some reason do not participate in the in the questionnaire or the training, but also coordinators, curriculum developers, anyone that seems interested in internationalization, EMI, intercultural competence development, or who are already working with that, because we seem to have a bit of dissonance on uh, what upper levels and what happens in real classrooms. So I'll love to have everyone in the same room, at least for one day. And uh, naturally the goals are to disseminate the results and also to provide feedback to the participants. What we expect from results and future implementation? Well, the first to measure support and instruction needed to integrate intercultural development in EMI teaching, and then provide empirical research-based support for lecturers from various disciplines and to different countries. And this initiative can integrate current or future lecture support systems at universities. Um, because in the future, maybe a next project, I think it would be very relevant to integrate this teacher training initiative into support systems for lecturers uh, so the ones who, for some reason, maybe they've been just told, look, your course, it's now in English, or maybe they are interested and that's why they're teaching in English, but they have not been prepared to do so. So to reach those people, but also pre-service training, because then we do not have to, you know, try to change the wheel while the car is going. I have no idea if that's an expression. If it's not, well, you can cite Kramer 2023. <laughs> uh, I think it would be much more effective if we added that to pre-service training so that future teachers are uh, aware of the, the, the importance and the relevance and how to add intercultural development to their practice. Um, that is it. So those are the references. Too many for you to read now, obviously, but you can just contact me. I can share them with you. And then that is all. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.